Good morning. Thank you for attending this special seminar. This, as I said earlier, is a historic event in that Anne Arundel County is offering opportunities, to my knowledge, Anne Arundel County government. The school system has done it since 2005, but Anne Arundel County government is doing it for the first time, to my knowledge, uh, in my 16 year history of working with minority and women business inclusion. So this is a treat that the county is willing to offer up opportunities on how to do business with them. This is a treat. I'd like to bring up Yvonne Murtaugh, who is the Senior Vice President and Chief Financial Officer of Live Casino and Hotel, who will provide greetings. Yvonne. Thank you, Wayne. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? What a turnout. What a special event. Uh, my name is Yvonne Murha. I'm the CFO here at Maryland Life. I welcome you all to today's event, especially for this uh, information session. We have very close bond relationship with our county, so we're very happy to see the first information session within today's event is about how to do business with the county. Now, there's a reason why this event is hosted here at Maryland Life, because this is important to us. Over the years, it's our priority, one of our priorities, is to seek out relationships and business with minority vendors in the community. And I'm very proud to report that over the years, we've spent over multi-million dollars, whether it's a contract, construction contractors or operating expenses uh, with our minority vendors. Uh, very honored to be a part of today's event. And we are open for business. So if you want to talk about potential relationships, uh, please reach out. We have executives come in and out throughout the day. And whether it is a hotel supplies, uh, chemicals, cleaning supplies, um, construction, subcontractor opportunities, uh, we want it all. And we welcome all. So again, welcome you all. Um, thank you for coming. And it's an honor to host you all. Thank you, Yvonne. Next, I'd like to bring up Mr. Sojio Palanta, uh, Palanco, who is the Multicultural Outreach Officer for Anne Arundel County uh, Office of the County Executive, who would like to present a plaque to Live Casino. Yvonne, can you please come back up right here in the middle? Sergio. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone, to be part of this event. Definitely, it's an uh, honor for me to uh, share this special moment with you, especially in this live casino, and all minority business that I plan to do business here in Anne Arundel County. In behalf of the County Executive Office, Stuart Pittman, we are welcome you to do business in Maryland, and we like to grow in as a community. We like to keep doing Anne Arundel County the best place. Thank you so much. Very good. I like okay, to present this. I like to offer this for you. Thank you so much. An um, executive citation. The, the citizens for Anne Arundel County, Maryland, salute live casino and hotel for hosting Anne Arundel County Government Office of the Central Services Information Session Meet and Greet in Association with the Maryland Washington Minority Companies Association. On behalf of the citizens of Anne Arundel County, we thank you for presenting an opportunity to connect with and present information to Maryland small minority and woman-owned business community. Thank you for helping and make Anne Arundel County the best place. Yes. Thank you, Sergio. Hey, we got gifts coming from the county exec. And opportunities next. Well. Next, I'd like to bring up a gentleman who has uh, committed uh, 13 years in the purchasing operations. Um, and he is currently the purchasing agent for Anne Arundel County, where he spent three of his 13 years as the leading purchasing operations for the county. Mr. Hine 
has been leading reform efforts to make the county's purchasing operation run more efficiently. And today, he'll be talking about new initiatives that will benefit small and minority-owned businesses. Mr. Andrew Hine. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Frager. We sincerely appreciate uh, MWMCA uh, and their partnership and working with us. Uh, we really appreciate being included in this event. And I first want to say what an amazing uh, and wonderful event this is. Um, you know, I really loved the, that uh, Mr. Frazier touched on when he uh, did his introduction, talking about uh, the connection, the connection that this opportunity pre presents, um, not only for sm uh, minority, small, and women-owned businesses uh, to connect with each other, but also to connect with the opportunities that are available out there to do business. Uh, and I will say we're excited, to, re really excited to be here today uh, because we're here for that same reason. We're looking to connect with you to build our network of minority, small, and uh, woman-owned businesses, uh, to build our vendor uh, capabilities, uh, to work with the existing procurement processes, but also uh, to be aware of new things that have come down the road and things that we're working on that will be beneficial to uh, both us as how we operate, but also to you, uh, the vendor community, and those interested in working and doing business with Anne Arundel County. First thing I want to start with is talk about who we are um, and kind of what we do. Uh, we are a uh, central purchasing operation. We'll go through a little bit about what our operation does. And it's important to get to know as we build that connection of you know, who you can get in contact with, who you can talk to. Uh, because although I'm right here, there's, there's many people who are in our audience and many people back at our offices right now who are more than happy to answer questions for you, to work with you, uh, to be able to help you when you have questions about a specific solicitation. Um, or any aspect of doing business with Anne Arundel County. So I'm, I've got contact information for you on that. Um, aside from that, um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the new initiatives that we have and the future initiatives that we're working on. So we're going to highlight those in some detail, uh, but please feel free to stop and see us afterwards. Come visit our website. Uh, come visit the MWMCA website where you'll have copies of this presentation. So please feel free you have to, uh, to follow up on that information and reach out to us. All right, so more about who we are. Uh, talking about our organization, we work, uh, we are a division of the central services offices, and we are centralized. So we purchase all of the goods and services for Anne Arundel County's operation. That typically runs about 400 to $500 million a year annually, and that includes everything from the major construction projects to the cleaning services, to the tree trimming services, to advanced IT solutions and systems. So I'm really excited. We've got a, a great group of different businesses here. I've already got a chance to meet some of you. I'm really excited about being able to connect with you and get contact information, uh, get you registered on our e-procurement system, uh, and getting you involved with how we, um, how we do business. Uh, one of the things that is central is to understand our objectives. Our objectives right now, um, I can boil it down into a basic, <clears throat> a basic structure of looking at, we are here to foster effective uh, and efficient competition with all of our procurements, with, with the opportunities that we provide. And we have to comply with the laws and regulations that we have in place. And you can find all of those on our county website. Uh, but that's important to understand, that those are kind of the basic structure of why we do competitive solicitations, why we operate our procurement process the way we do. <clears throat> but the important thing is that we're always looking at what we can do to be more efficient and more effective, not only for our vendor community, but for our internal operations. In the last three years, we've really been focused on what we can do to speed up that process, make it easier for you uh, as vendor community in, in responding to solicitations. Uh, and I think the next phase we're going to talk more about is the opportunities that we're doing to um, not only improve opportunities for small, minority, woman-owned businesses, uh, but change laws and regulations so that we can look at how we can expand the opportunities for those businesses and all businesses that want to do business with us, the inner or under county government. <clears throat> so we've talked about that. Let's talk about our team. Our team is broken down into this group. And one of the things, whenever I do presentations like this, is the question of, well, that's great, but how do I actually get a hold of people? How do I reach out, and who do I actually work with? This is our, a breakdown of our general teams. Um, we broke down our organization and our buying teams based on the like agencies, like services, into, into these buying groups. And we have the names of the managers and the contact information for the managers. And, a couple of them are sitting here in the audience, and they're probably giving me the look of like, OK, my name's phone number's up there. That's great. Um, 
But I'm really excited about this. I will say we are, we're really excited to, to reach out, and I will say all of our managers are very excited to address questions because our goal is always to make sure that we can get more of you involved in the process, more businesses, uh, more small minority woman-owned businesses in responding to solicitations, having you become successful at winning those solicitations. Uh, we have our MBE coordinator here today, Miss Elisa Brown, and she is a champion of being able to connect those businesses. Uh, she's got a very established career and has worked with those type of um, opportunities uh, for um, a, a large majority of her career, and I will say uh, she's been integral to that as well. So please reach out to her as well. Her contact information's uh, going to be either, I think it's on the end slide, so we'll go over that as well. But um, just wanted to make sure you had our information on our teams. So we talked about initiatives and efficiency. One of the major new efficiency initiatives that we've been putting forward is our e-procurement system. And I will say, Anne Arundel County, uh, it has taken over three years to get to this point, uh, but we finally have an e-procurement cradle-to-grade system that is operational. Uh, we're still building on it and making it better and making it more efficient. But if you go to the Anne Arundel County website, you will see this login information. And one thing to keep in mind is that if you look over here at the corner, there's a vendor login and an employee login section. Once you've registered, you'll be able to log into that vendor login section and have access to uh, current contracts that you've been working on, current contracts you've been awarded, solicitations you've responded to, uh, copies of your purchase order, automatic notifications when individual solicitations come out. So we're going to highlight some of these. Here's the website address for the new e-procurement port system. Please feel free to go ahead and visit this whenever you, um, when you log on to our website. And please register. That's one of our asks for today is that you, you walk away from this session and understand that, you know, in order to, to connect with us, one of the things we're really looking for is for you to register on our system so we can identify and connect with you, can look for you for small procurement opportunities, uh, as well as uh, to work with you on uh, competitive solicitations. So uh, please make sure you register. Um, key takeaways, and you know, I could talk to you for a really long time about all the different new initiatives that this will bring uh, and the efficiencies that this will bring, but really I want you, the vendor community and the, the minority small business community, to have some key takeaways of what, what you can get out of this. Um, and the first thing I would look at is thinking about the uh, receiving automatic notifications about uh, procurements as they come up. That's one of the key um, efficiencies that you'll get right now is a lot of companies, especially small and minority and women-owned businesses, say, well, how do I get notification of a solicitation? Um, I want to make sure I get instant access to that because by the time it comes out and I become aware of it or shows up in the newspaper, it may be too late. I may not have time to respond to it. This is a great way to help you with that. You'll receive automatic notifications based off of your, and I know in a lot of other uh, databases you're registering on your NAICS codes. This registers on NIGP, which is almost a identical in process. It's just a different type of number. Uh, but you'll be able to quickly register uh, with the type of businesses and services you want to receive notifications on. You also save time in responding to solicitations because you can respond to them online if you choose to. If you still want to send in a hard copy, you certainly can. But if you want to respond to the solicitation online, it's an easy way to be able to press submit, and it's already done. So you'll also, like I said, we'll be able to manage your information, your administrative documentations, your purchase orders directly online. All right, so one of the things I wanted to highlight, I don't want to go into a ton of detail, but with any type of new system that as it comes out, there's always going to be questions that come up of how, how do I solve this problem? I may get stuck at a certain stage in the registration process or the solicitation process, responding to a solicitation, and we want to make sure that you know and are aware of where those opportunities for more information are. Right here we have um, a link that will set you up with a very specific instructions on how to register uh, getting started with the registration process. Um, if you click on there, there's an entire PDF that'll pop down. It's probably a lot more detailed than you may need, but um, it's got a ton of information on how to register. Uh, then there's also phone numbers and email contact information. It's on the website, but I wanted to make sure we highlighted it here for you today. Uh, if you run into questions or concerns while you're working through the process and say, I, you know, I just, I'm not quite sure if I did this right, please feel free to email our support team or uh, call them directly. They're more than happy to answer any specific questions on registration or responding to solicitations. Um, just general questions about that. Obviously, also feel free to reach out to our purchasing office. We are more than happy to help you with that as well. Other questions usually come up when it comes to responding to solicitations, because that's usually the time where people say, OK, now I really want to respond to this. How do I actually respond to these solicitations? 
There's information right here on how to, um, how to respond to a solicitation. It'll give you, again, step-by-step -step instructions. It'll also help you understand more about your vendor profile, because once you've registered, you may also want to go in and change information about who receives the notifications, how to get access to um, add more information or more people from your company to receive notifications. All that information is right here at your fingertips. We talked about initiatives related to efficiency in our new e-procurement system, and that I know is great. I know that there's opportunities there for improving how, we, um, how people respond to solicitations. But I want to talk also a little bit about the initiatives we've, we've started on that are going to help with small minority businesses, um, women-owned businesses, veteran-owned, service-disabled veteran-owned businesses that want to get their foot in the door with Anne Arundel County. And it took about two years to get to this point, but we are now at a point where we've changed the small procurement threshold. Now, a lot of people look at that and say, well, what is a small procurement threshold? I don't really know what that means. Um, the small procurement threshold is the threshold that we have right now where we have to do a formal competitive solicitation. Originally, it was established at $25,000, and now it's been raised. It took a vote by the, um, uh, during the last election. Uh, it was approved by a margin of 75% to increase that small procurement threshold. And really, what that means to you guys uh, in the audience, and if you've never done business with Anne Arundel County, it means instead of having to do a formal you know, 30, 40, 50 page solicitation responding to that online, it means that you'll be able to respond to a uh, request for quote that is some, uh, much more simple. It may be something where you're able to submit it directly using your own quote form. It's going to make it much easier and time consuming and less time consuming for you to respond to those individual solicitations. Uh, it also means we don't have to put it out necessarily. We could put it out competitively and to everybody else out there, or we can just take a market uh, segment and just get three quotes for, for services that are under $50,000 now. So for those businesses that are in the audience that say, well, I want to be able to do more business with Anne Arundel County, this is a great way to get your foot in the door. Um, it's also, like I said, it, it reduces the amount of terms and conditions that you have to agree to. Was, you know, a, a packet that's usually uh, 20 to 30 pages long. Now that's condensed down to basically three page uh, uh, minimum terms and conditions that we are required by law to have. So it makes things a lot easier. Um, and it also, uh, like I said, from a risk perspective for vendors, especially small businesses that are getting started uh, or businesses that are just starting to do business with Anne Arundel County, you may not want a contract with four renewal years after it. You may want just kind of a, a short term initiative or a short term project to work on. This is that opportunity to be able to kind of get your foot in the door. So we're excited about that. Uh, we're excited to uh, be able to connect with more minority small businesses to include on those solicitations. So please, if you see our representatives, please get registered on our port system. Give us your contact information. We're more than happy to connect with you. I actually met with uh, two or three different uh, companies already this morning that I know we've got small procurements coming down the pike for. Um, and I'm really excited about that. One of them's uh, for construction management services. Uh, there's a couple others that we'll be working on later on next week that'll be uh, coming up that'll be in similar, you know, small scope of services, very simple, very quick turnaround. So please get involved with that process. We're excited about it. But I will say that's not, that's not where we're stopping. That's just kind of the next step. So um, the next and future initiatives. I want to talk a little bit about our future initiatives and uh, kind of where we're going. Um, first and foremost, um, when we talk about um, the small procurement threshold, that's, that's one thing we can work on. One thing that the county is going to continue to be looking at is um, be able to um, do more outreach events, be able to connect with you. This is one uh, of many outreach events we're going to be uh, partnering on in the future. Uh, I want to be able to make sure that we are accessible and that you, you're able to uh, meet with us, connect with us, ask questions. Um, get involved with um, uh, looking at uh, individual solicitations, providing feedback. Um, I also want to mention that we are going to be, um, and we're excited about this, we don't have the budget for it now, but we are going to be requesting budget for a disparity study, which is something we have not done at least I've, in decades as far as, I'm, as far as I've been made aware. So we're very excited about that and planning of what we can use that disparity study information for to help plan future projects and future initiatives, and that will likely come in changes in legislation, changes in laws and, and processes for our department, uh, but we're involved in that process and, and committed to trying to work to get the funds to do that and, and move forward with having a, uh, a more robust minority small, and business, uh, small business and woman-owned business program here at Anne Arundel County. 
So please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I asked for you today, and I know we went over a lot of information, but I, I really look for um, the businesses that are here with us today, as well as businesses as a whole, uh, to provide us their input and their feedback, to get involved and register in our port system. Um, as we grow and continue to develop our minority, small, woman-owned business program, we look for you, the community, to talk to us and come up with your ideas and suggestions. We can't do everything, but we will do what we can, and we want to get involved with uh, making this process um, more efficient, uh, more effective for you, uh, and, and uh, obviously making sure we're providing fair and open competition. But uh, please feel free to reach out. I really appreciate your time today, and I look forward. Uh, we've got some great other panelists who are going to be coming up here and talking about their initiatives and involving with that. So with that, I turn things back over, and thank you again for including us. Um, next, oh, again, just to recap, Andrew said, you got to register with Anne Arundel County. You got to register with them if you want a shot. You got to. And the next thing, understand that disparity study that Andrew spoke about will open up opportunities in the county, again, never before seen. But what the disparity study does, it provides proof that discrimination exists to allow the MBE, WBE, SBE, whatever program that they want to establish, LTBGQ, whatever program that they want to establish can happen with the form of disparity study. But the county is making an investment because those studies cost about between a million to a million and a half. So it's needed, we want it, it has to be done, but that lets you know that Anne Arundel County is serious because I don't believe it's ever been done before. Next, I'd like to bring up Ms. Mary Jo Childs, who has been with Anne Arundel County Public Schools as supervisor of purchasing for four years. Before that, and I know this to be a fact, Mary spent 14 years with the Board of Public Works, first as their general counsel and then as their procurement advisor. Mary, please come forward. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Frazier, um, and thank you, Marilyn Live. This is such a cool venue. I'm, I'm used to giving presentations in the, the basement of government buildings, so this is a big step up in my world. Um, first of all, I, uh, I'd like to kind of explain uh, the similarities and differences between my, my colleagues at the county government and what Anne Arundel County Public Schools does. Um, quite often I get the question, what do schools buy? And the first thing that comes to people's minds is construction and papers and pencils. But what I ask them to do is to mentally walk through a school day and you'll realize the, the depth and breadth of what we put under contract. For example, you walk up to a school building, the cement you walk on, the sidewalk you walk on, the landscaping you walk past, that is all under contract. That little camera you stand before, before you can get into the main office, that is a contract. When you walk into the main office and go through that Raptor system to make sure you don't have any, any problems in your background, that's a contract. The chair that you sit in while you're waiting for your student and his lost lunch, that's a contract. Uh, when that student walks into his or her classroom and sits down at that desk, that's a contract. She logs onto her computer, that Chromebook is a contract. All the software on that computer is a contract. At the end of the day, when he or she walks out to the lacrosse game, those officials are under contract. That video camera is under contract. Those bleachers are under contract. Not to mention the, the wonderful support we've gotten from Governor Hogan, the General Assembly, uh, County Executive Pittman, our Board of Education, and the wonderful Dr. Arlotta has resulted in the past couple years of a lot of expansion of um, maintenance efforts for schools and a lot of new, uh, the expansion of pre-K programs uh, has resulted in the requirement for us to uh, procure a lot more stuff and a lot more construction. So it's a really exciting time to be uh, in the public school system. And I noticed my, uh, my wonderful colleagues at Baltimore County Public Schools are also here. So I encourage you to uh, come to our table and also to Baltimore County Public Schools because uh, we have a lot of exciting opportunities that are coming up. Um, 
And first of all, I, and second of all, I'd like to explain the differences between procuring with a state agency, procuring with a county agency, procuring with the schools. Um, as Mr. Frazier mentioned, we have a long-standing MBE program, a decade and a half, of uh, having MBE subcontracting goals on our uh, construction, capital construction projects, and I'm happy to say we, we do meet that 29% goal. For those of you, <laughs> yeah, I'm very proud of my folks. Uh, for those of you who do business with the state, our program is very similar. We use those same gosh awful forms, so you should be familiar with, with our MBE forms. Uh, so I encourage you um, to, to uh, come and see what Anne Arundel County Schools uh, has to offer. And another, and I'm, I'm very happy to say another kind of um, advantage we have is I think a lot of you are probably familiar with those hundreds and hundreds and pages of Comar regulations, procurement regulations. Most of those don't apply to us. So we have the ability to have some discretion uh, when we are procuring. So it gives us the flexibility to maybe be a little more streamlined, a little bit more efficient. If you take nothing away from my presentation, make sure that you register on the new eMaryland marketplace. That is the venue for you to get to all city, county, state, and school system procurements. That, that one venue will get you notice. We're all required by law to publish on eMaryland Marketplace. Actually, this week is probably not the best time to tell you to register because this is their transition period. They're just getting the new system online, but it's really, really very important that you register as a vendor on eMaryland Marketplace so you'll get notice of all bidding opportunities, anything over $25,000. And this is the Anne Arundel County Public Schools website. I also urge you to register as a vendor on our website. It's the way we can communicate with you. It's the way you can get notice of all those bidding opportunities that I told you about. And it's, we've made it a fairly simple process, but that's, that's our homepage. And you'll see right up in the corner, vendors and contractors, that's the icon you click to get to your registration page. And the reason I was so meticulous about this is because I'm a visual learner, and maybe I was hoping maybe some of you were, is I need to see a, a page in order for me to, to um, uh, quickly access where I need to be. And right there on the right-hand side, it says vendor registration. And that's the first page of the vendor registration. A very important uh, uh, just a reminder. Um, here it's telling, you, uh, telling us what kind of business you are. But one of the big, uh, I don't know, maybe sticking points we've been finding with a lot of our smaller businesses is we need to make sure, uh, the, the law requires us to make sure that all of our contractors are in good standing with the Maryland Department of Assessments and Taxations. It's not a complicated process, but it's a necessary process. So it's something you might want to do before you uh, submit a bid. Now this is the important page, and I think you, many of you are probably familiar with a, a similar page on email and marketplace if you registered. This is what triggers our notices to you. So if we have a construction contract or maybe a general trades contract out there, if you've marked the box for general trades, then you're going to get notice of that solicitation. If you haven't marked the box, you're not going to get that email. So err on the side of caution and mark more boxes than you think applies to you. At worst, you're going to get a lot of uh, annoying emails, but it's better to get notice than to not get notice. And the final step in the process, we ask you to submit a W-9 to us so we can put you in the system. And what this also enables us to do is to pay you. Once you get that contract, we, want to, we need to be able to pay you, and we pay you through our system. As I said, if you're interested in bidding on a specific project, you register as a bidder, uh, register on email and marketplace. If the, if the project has an MBE uh, goal, pay special attention to the forms and requirements. The, the most heartbreaking thing we do, and I know it's heartbreaking for our bidders as well, is when we have to reject a bid, a low bid, because there are material errors on the MBE forms. We are, uh, my amazing MBE office, Esther Avery and Tina Montez, who is here today, uh, are always willing to walk you through box by box. We'll walk you through that form. And also, anyone in our procurement office can do the same thing for you. And that can be done beforehand. You can call us. It's not, there's nothing underhanded about doing that. We can call and walk you through those forms. So please do that. Um, this is just a demonstration of what we currently have uh, on our uh, open bid page. 
And the one thing I really want to point out to you, do we have a lot of trades contractors in this audience? Can you raise your hand? A couple. We have a really exciting uh, a bid opportunity down that very last box. It's small trades and miscellaneous carpentry services. You can imagine with 126 buildings in, a, in our school system, we have a lot of the smaller maintenance and construction projects. So in order to help our, our facility staff uh, be able to quickly to get people, uh, quickly get people on site, uh, we've done a pre-qualification for small trades and miscellaneous carpentry. This will be projects less than $25,000. And you notice the bid closes at the end of August. So if you're interested, if you fall into that category, it's, it's a really exciting and new opportunity for us. Please uh, look into that and see if it's something you might be interested in. Believe me, we have a lot of business in that area. The first one is what I just spoke about, the bid due date, August 29th. We're also pre-qualifying general contractors for projects over $25,000. Um, we are working on the RFB right now with our facilities folks, but we expect to have that on our website very soon. And if you register as a vendor, you'll get an email notice of that. So that's another uh, first time for us, and it's very exciting. Um, we have uh, design build pavilions for some of you smaller contractors at 11 of our high schools. Uh, bid due date's coming up end of July. And then we have a, another opportunity, screening and recoding gym floors at various schools. We have, like I said, 126 buildings. That's a lot of gym floors. And that is due um, very soon. So if you're interested in that, please look onto our website. And this expansive list is, uh, we, we got a, a chunk of money uh, for security upgrades at our schools. And uh, part of those security upgrades are um, security vestibules. These are kind of the, the entryway, uh, secured entryways in all of our school systems before you get to the main office. We've awarded the design contracts for all these schools, and we, will, we hope to be soon in early 2020 awarding the construction of those um, uh, security vestibules. These are, again, uh, we've awarded the design contracts on a lot of these projects. Uh, so we expect for the construction to start uh, fairly uh, soon. Um, the, the earliest ones coming up are Arlington Echo dock replacement. Um, that's August, September of this year. And the Glen Burnie High School field house, and that's uh, September of this year. Uh, the other ones we have awarded the design um, contracts for, so we expect construction to start again uh, fairly early in 2020. First line, uh, what, what we need uh, for you to kind of have your ducks in a row before you submit a bid, because the, the, we don't want you to waste time in submitting a bid and then find out that perhaps there's a qualification problem uh, at the end. Um, so uh, these are the kind of things you should kind of um, have in order before you bid. Again, business in good standing with SDAT. Uh, we, we cannot... We, we have to do special treatment if you've been debarred by the state or federal government. Uh, we have some restrictions. Uh, we typically require at least five years experience on the larger projects, uh, but experience of your key personnel can be counted. Because what happens, especially in technology, uh, we'll have someone who's a president of a company, he's got 30 years under his belt, he goes and starts up his own company, and all of a sudden he doesn't have the qualifications or experience to bid. So we are counting that experience of, of the key personnel in that project um, uh, as uh, background. Um, and we in the schools, of course, uh, dealing with our, our precious, precious students, we have uh, very strict rules about uh, student uh, data and privacy. Okay, this is just some bidding tips, some things I've learned over my 30 years uh, in, in, in government procurement. Um, before you prepare a bid, if there's a similar project that was awarded, ask for a copy of that winning bid. Uh, a lot of folks say, can I do that? Am I, is that really permissible? Uh, absolutely. Uh, we are public servants using public dollars, and these are public documents. There may be portions of a, of a bid that may, needs to be redacted, but I, I think there's a lot of valuable information to be gleaned from, uh, from a successful bid on a past project. So ask for that first. Um, go over every page of the solicitation and ask questions in writing well before the, the due date. And I know it's confusing because we all do things differently. The state does them differently from the county, the county does them differently from the city, and the city does it differently from the schools. So it's, it confuses me. <laughs> so um, 
look over the RFB because there may be different things in there if perhaps you've done projects for other government entities. Okay, if you're submitting by uh, delivery, you know, Postal Service, FedEx, or UPS, give yourself an extra day. Uh, we in the school system especially have this messed up process because our, our post office closes. It takes our post office an extra day for next day delivery. So always make sure you give yourself that extra day even though it says next day. Um, don't leave blanks on the bid forms unless the solicitation allows you to. Check your math, check your math, check your math. Have somebody else check your math. Um, don't bid alternates unless the solicitation allows alternates. Uh, a lot of times in our commodities procurement, we'll be asking for a widget Y, and you'll bid widget X. Um, unless we say it's okay to bid widget X, we can't accept the bid. Um, if your bid is rejected, ask why. In a low bid situation, typically there's not a formal debriefing, but it certainly doesn't stop you from picking up the phone and talking to the buyer and asking why your bid was rejected and asking how you can do better next time. And our folks love to get those phone calls because we want you to be in the running next time. If bidding on a project with MBE goals, take care preparing the forms and ask our MBE office for guidance if you are uncertain about how to properly fill out the forms. Again, do that ahead of time. And you can ask the purchasing office too. We've, we've got, I think, about 300 years of experience among my staff. We, we want your bid to be accepted. We want you to do well. Uh, it's to everybody's benefit. So please ask in advance. We will walk you through box by box. Um, and, and I know they're confusing because um, they're confusing to me too. Okay, if you're thinking of bidding as a subcontractor, register on our website as a pro, as, so prime contractors are aware of your interest. You, on our website, you can be designated as a subcontractor. So the primes who are, are trying to meet MBE goals can see your name on that plan holder list. And reach out to the prime contractors on the list, because you also, as a sub, will be able to see the names of the primes who are interested. Prepare and practice a brief marketing pitch about your company if you are asked for information at the pre-bid meeting. We do a lot of matchmaking at, at our, our pre-bid meetings. Uh, we ask our MBEs to stand up and, and be recognized so that our primes know, know you're there and what you do. Uh, if considering partnering with a new prime contractor, do your due diligence. Check for a history of default and late subcontract payments on other projects. And we are happy to share information on defaulted contracts. Doesn't happen often, but that's something you as a sub would want to know before you want to partner with, with that contractor. Again, uh, before you prepare your bid, request a copy of uh, past similar bids. And make sure you are MBE certified for the work you are asked to bid. I, I don't think it happens too much anymore, but in the past we were having MBEs proposed for work they were not certified for, and that's not something we can count. Um, again, go over every page of the solicitation and ask questions in writing well before the due date. Check your math, check your math, check your math. <laughs> And this is just a demonstration, a visual demonstration of what I was just talking about. We have one company there listed as a subcontractor, one listed as a prime. That's where you can maybe do your work to outreach. That's how our website is set up. Another way to kind of get your foot in the door is to uh, be awarded a, a cooperative agreement. Uh, there are several large um, education-focused um, uh, co-ops that we utilize. The big one is the Maryland Education Enterprise Consortium uh, called Meek. Uh, a lot of technology firms on that, but we use a lot. I know my, my colleagues at other um, school districts use it as well. We use the state's CATS contract as well. Uh, GSA schedules 70 and 84 only because those are the only two we're allowed to use. And then we use Omnia Partners, which is a national uh, cooperative. So if you can get yourself in that door, uh, you probably get a lot of business as well. Um, increase your visibility to government buyers. We get, I know and uh, Andrew probably gets the same, we get a lot of marketing phone calls and emails weekly um, to, uh, to stand out. Um, become certified as an MBE or a DBE. Uh, state and federal certification as a small business. State and federal certification as a veteran-owned small business. And then, of course, register on eMaryland Marketplace. That's the big, big engine that drives everything. 
And this is uh, my wonderful, wonderful colleagues at, uh, uh, we work very, we share a wall. We work very closely together, the MBE office at, at Anne Arundel County Public Schools. This is their mission statement. And if you haven't met them already, Tina Montez is here today, and she works with Esther Avery, who is a very experienced and wonderful, gracious lady. She will be happy to help you with any MBE issues. And this is their uh, goals. And as I said, we proudly have meet, met the 29% goal. And these are um, uh, some of the contact information uh, for folks. And, and we, always, we still always go to, I keep calling them GOMA. We keep go, keep go to GOMA when we have uh, technical um, questions. Um, and I can tell you, every winter, uh, we partner with Montgomery County Public Schools and Prince George's County Public Schools, and we have a, uh, a kind of training session and outreach session uh, during which we go over MBE forms and we talk about some of the common bidding mistakes, and we would love for you to attend uh, that annual get-together. If you register as a vendor, uh, vendor on our website, you'll get an invitation from us. So it's, I think it's been a very beneficial uh, get-together in the past. And one other initiative that I'm, I'm excited about um, is um, we had our heads together, my, my buyers and I, and we were talking about the Im immense amount of spend that occurs um, at the $5,000 and below limit. Our schools, 126 of them, all have P cards. They have credit cards, sometimes many credit cards. And there's a lot of discretionary spend that occurs at that level. And it's very easy just to go to Amazon. Uh, but what we'd like to do is to steer some of that discretionary spend to, to our, our local small businesses, minority and small businesses. So we're developing a uh, quick and easy directory to make it easy for that discretionary spend to happen at the local level whether that, rather than the Amazon level. So we're, we're looking forward to that initiative and uh, we hope to have it out, I think, sometime this fall. Um, so hopefully that'll steer some of the Amazon spend to some of our, our local companies. And with that, if anyone has any questions other than that, I'll just turn it back over to the next speaker. Thank you, Mary Jo. And congratulations on achieving the 29% spend uh, with the school system. That is quite a feat. And congratulations on developing that small business uh, opportunity for under 25,000. That's significant. Um, and it appears to be very simple to get registered to do business under. So again, I encourage you all to get registered with Anne Arundel County Public Schools. Our next speaker, uh, Ms. Keisha Haith, um, is currently the Anne Arundel County Economic Development Corporation and is responsible for managing the revitalization program and assisting smaller minority businesses. Ms. Haith has been an economic development professional for 18 years and served most recently as economic Development Director for Dorchester County on the Eastern Shore. I would like to bring forth Ms. Keisha Haith. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. And can we just take a moment to give Wayne and his staff a round of applause right now? I know from experience doing these types of events, it's not easy, but I can tell you that this process was extremely seamless. So thank you all for making this a seamless process. So in addition to being in business, I'm also an ordained minister. And one thing that I learned when I was in ministerial class and going through to be ordained, I pastor told us not to make people happy twice. Happy to see you go up and happy to see you sit down. So I promise I will not make you happy twice today, but only once, all right? So I'll <laughs> stay within my allotted time on this morning. Okay, so Anne Arundel Economic Development Corporation is a nonprofit organization, and we were actually spun out of county government. So similar to um, my colleagues in Prince George's County and Howard County, we operate under um, as a nonprofit agency, but we are funded by county government. Um, within our nonprofit organization, we have various departments that include administration, 
finance, business development, agriculture, and marketing research. Um, so today, I'm going to talk about the business development side a little bit, and we, we are broken down by industry sectors. So the main sector um, for me today that I want to talk about is our small minority business, and that's one of the areas that I focus on at AAEDC, but also I have Anita Dooling here with me who handles our hospitality and hotels, particularly Maryland Live Casino, and works um, in the international department as well. So some of you may be familiar with um, our Volt program, loan programs. That is a, pro a loan program where we get funding particularly from the casino um, revenue. Um, and the history of the Volt loan is um, that money comes in. We are one of eight funding managers in the state of Maryland. Um, some of you may be familiar with Prince George's um, uh, Financial Services First, uh, Shelly Gross Wade and her team, and also Stan Tucker. Um, both of those entities do a lot of work with the minority business community. So this Volt Loan Program is one of the programs where we can loan money outside of Anne Arundel County. So typically our programs are focused on Anne Arundel County, but this particular program, if you are outside of the county, we can certainly um, make loan dollars um, available um, to you. So some of the requirements on this program um, include you have to be in that um, casino um, range, and they're listed abo above on the slide, but you just have to be in that target area to take advantage of these particular dollars. Um, so our loans to small business, they go anywhere from a minimum of $25,000 to $500,000. And they're typically below market rate. And we try to come in and provide gap financing. So if you're partnering with a bank, um, any local bank, and you already have some financing, and you're saying, okay, I'm about $200,000 short, we can come in and provide that gap financing because typically we don't like to compete with banks. So if you come to us after you've um, had a loan approved from a bank, we won't come in and do anything because, again, we do not want to compete with our friends in the banking community, but we will provide GAP to work together on a deal. So some of the money can be used for building improvements and working capital. The application process is, is pretty simple, and I must say our finance team um, at AAEDC does a good job with sitting down with the business, and if you're not at a place where you are bankable, and a lot of times startups are not, believe me, I know, I've been down that road as well, um, owning an auto body shop and a consulting firm. So sometimes when you come in as a startup, you're not bankable. But the one thing that we do that I have um, found that is very rare in the state of Maryland is that we'll sit down with you and if you're not at that particular requirement um, which is a 640 credit score we'll talk to you and basically give you some steps so that you can increase that credit score and we won't give you a necessarily a no but we'll say okay these are the steps that you need to be bankable and so that we can you know give you um, approve a loan for you so we want to help you gain approval because we want your business to be successful we want you to grow and expand, um, particularly if you're in Anne Arundel County, but for the state of Maryland, because we all win when you do well in business. Um, so as I mentioned, some of the requirements is that 640 or above credit score. Um, startups, we ask that you have a minimum of 10% equity injection into the business. So we typically want you to have um, some skin in the game. So what I normally tell businesses when I counsel them and, and having gone through this too, if you're not willing to invest in yourself with an equity injection, why would others invest in you? So you want to make sure that you try to put some skin in the game when you're investing. So you want to invest in yourself. So most recently, we have um, the Next Stage Tech Fund. So this is specifically for technology businesses. So if you are a technology business that supports cyber and national defense, we have a specific program to help you obtain a loan, um, particularly if you're doing some contracting work. So the loans range between $50,000 and $250,000. Um, we also have some mentors that are um, 
in that cyberspace and that technology space. So we will um, match you up with those mentors in that space to help you, um, you know, get into that space and also grow in the contracting arena and that technology arena. So one of the programs that I manage is our Rundle Community Reinvestment Program. That's called our ACR program. That um, program offers loans up to $100,000 to businesses at 0% interest. You heard me right, 0% interest. Um, this is for facade improvements and interior improvements of a particular facility. So if you're a business in Anne Arundel County and you're in one of our nine revitalization focus area zones, you could potentially be approved for up to $100,000 at 0% interest. Um, typically, um, we loan the dollars for about seven years. Um, and that, that's a big help um, when you're trying to do some um, improvements on the outside of your building or some interior work on the inside. Um, in addition to that, um, Small Business Development Center, I'm sure many of you are aware of SBDC. We have a consultant that is located right in our building um, in Annapolis off of Riva Road, and that SBDC consultant will provide services, of course, um, at no cost to the business. And those programs range from helping you develop a business plan to if you're an existing business and you need help with HR or with your marketing. Our um, SBDC consultant, Candace Pruitt, I say she's one of the best in the state. Um, and she will help you with your marketing plan, help you tweak your business a little bit, and even look at um, a business management assistance from a business management um, perspective. So she can help with that. Um, next, site selection. If you're ever looking for a business um, location or space, if you're not in Anne Arundel County currently, see me because you should be. Um, just a little plug for us. Um, we can help you with that. We can help you find office space. We can help you find warehouse space, any of that. And particularly if you're in another area and you just want to expand your business to Anne Arundel County, we can help you with that as well. Um, we have an awesome business development team um, that's willing to help businesses um, navigate through that process. Um, in addition, how many people in here have um, problems sometimes with permitting, navigating the permitting process, knowing what permits to get? Okay, I see a hand in the back, a few hands in the back. All right, so in our office, we have um, a business development person that will help through that permitting process. Believe it or not, we had um, a situation in the past where businesses aren't aware of the type of permits that they need to obtain. And um, some people have done the work without obtaining any permits, unfortunate for them, um, but it does happen. So we can help you from the beginning when you have just an idea for a business, through the permitting process to locating um, a space for your business to even once you're started, you know, if you have any questions that come up, we can help you. So we can um, help you navigate through that um, process and um, be helpful to you in determining what permits are necessarily required. Um, in addition to that, we have a training um, grant that provides 50% of training reimbursement. If you're sending your employees to training, we will reimburse you 50% up to $1,000 um, for your training. That is an excellent program. And you can um, couple that program with state workforce training dollars as well. So if you're working with Maryland Department of Commerce in regards to training your employees, if you're in Anne Arundel County, you can use our program and the state's program and Anne Arundel Workforce Development Corporation's program to help you train your employees. And then lastly, um, our Runway to Success program is an initiative that we partnered with Southwest, Southwest Airlines on, and this particular um, program will provide a round-trip airline ticket to someone from your business or you that's, um, that is um, going to training or a conference. So again, these are stackable programs. You can use the Workforce Training Grant Program and the Runway to Success Program to go to a conference and training and certainly help your bottom line for your, um, your business. Um, so the last item, market research. Um, if you are a startup or an existing business and you're looking for customized reports for your business, 
um, we encourage you to connect with us. And also, we have um, indicators that we send out on a regular business um, basis that tells you about new and expanding businesses that have located to Anne Arundel County. We also send out our quarterly economic indicators. If you would like to connect with us and receive that straight to your inbox, I encourage you to go to our website, um, www.aaedc, and sign up for our emails. And we'd be happy to put you on the list so that you stay connected with Anne Arundel Economic Development Corporation. That is it for me, and I thank you all for your time and your attention. Have a great day.